The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you in association with Access Credit Union and the Donal O'Driscoll Student Bursary. The Donal O'Driscoll Student Bursary has been established to honour the career and achievements of Access Credit Union's late CEO, Donal O'Driscoll. Throughout his long term as CEO, Donal championed the credit union ethos of supporting and empowering members, particularly in the sphere of education. In recognition of this, the Donal O'Driscoll Bursary will provide financial support to one individual embarking on third level education or commencing an apprenticeship in 2022. The recipient of the bursary will be awarded €5,000 to help with costs. To apply for the bursary, visit www.accesscu.ie forward slash bursary. Close your eyes and pull like down. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined by Matthew Hurley from the Star Sports Department. Before we kick things off, I'd just like to give a gentle reminder to our listeners and viewers to please rate, review and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you in association with our friends at Access Credit Union. Access Credit Union, where your bank really does matter. Choose the credit union, choose local, choose community. On this week's podcast, we're building up to Sunday's Carberry Junior A Football Championship Final between Aberdeen Rangers and St. James's, and we're going to hear from both camps. Matthew has been catching up with St. James's player manager, Alan O'Shea and Aberdeen selector Dennis O'Leary. Later on the show, we'll be joined by four-time British Rally champion Keith Cronin ahead of this weekend's Yorkshire Rally. Ballylickie's Cronin and his Killarney co-driver Mikey Galvin are targeting a record equaling fifth British Rally Championship. And if they're to achieve that record, then this weekend's race is a must-win affair. But we're going to start this week's show with a quick roundup from the knockout stages of the county football championship last weekend and Matthew is going to kick us off by bringing us his top five takeaways starting with number five and number five it's um it's a bear club actually with Adrigal uh, losing after extra time against Sport we in the end like it was a tough game for Adrigal to lose they were leading at half time and extra time by a point and ended up losing, but uh, they've had an excellent season overall, Adderall. Uh, David Harrington was excellent for them. And uh, yeah, both were pretty unbeaten, but Adderall really put it up to them. Very good performance by them. And they'll do themselves proud now next year, uh, going into next year. They'll be a team to watch, definitely. And uh, number four is a prediction that I got wrong a few weeks ago about uh, Skibbereen against Donnie's. Um, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, you know, um, lambasted now in the next few weeks over that prediction. But uh, yeah, Skip, they proved me wrong. Um, they proved G right, Vernon's lads, and um, they won it. They won it in the end against Donnie's by 13 points to eight. Dylan Howard and the guy that I interviewed for the paper actually got four points. So maybe if I interview a few Skip players before the Vikings game, maybe they'll um, call Trump's in. But uh, yeah, very good performance by Skib getting through to the semi-final. And uh, Skib will be desperate now to get up to the Premier Senior. They're a former all Ireland champion after all. So, very good win now for Skib. Um, and Matthew, before you move on to the next one then, just briefly on Skib's win over Donnie's because uh, obviously a huge West Cork derby and they overcame that, but they have another big challenge in the semi-final. They're playing St. Michael's who were beaten finalists last season so i'm not going to ask you for a prediction at this stage but what's the kind of vibes as far as you can tell will skibbereen fancy their chances against what is obviously a well fancied michael's team it'll be a tough ask for them and uh, they, they've performed excellent in the championship so far with say uh, dylan horan don't know cotton brian price has played very well so they've excellent players all over the field that gino donovan has got them drilled this season you could even hear from his interviews with the paper in recent weeks but this Michaels team, they've reached the final last year. They've reached the final the year before as well, I'm sure, as well against uh, Airog. And they're seeing what Airog and Mallow have done in the Premier Senior Championship since. 
So they'll be desperate to go up uh, this next season. I suppose with Michaels, they aren't a team relying on individuals. They're more of a team collective, really. Like They aren't, haven't any county players in the team, but they're well drilled. Well, I suppose a positive note for Ski may be something that they could cling on to is Michael's hurling team back Black Rock or in the semi finals of the hurling. If they reach the final, maybe Skip have a chance there because most of their players will be going off playing hurling. So maybe that's an advantage for Skip. But I think Skip will be up against it. I think not in the green side on the other side is probably the easiest side of the draw. But Skip will give it a good rattle in this game. They'll definitely give Michael's a rattle. But I just think this Michael's team is all drilled this year to try and get promoted to Premier Senior after a three year wait, really. Good stuff, Matthew. Okay, number three. And uh, the top three is the Premier Senior games. Uh, two of them disappointing, no in three and two. Uh, the one about Carberry losing to Black Ball and College. I was at that game. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of hope around this Carberry division inside, but Black Ball and College just, you know, excelled in this game. Like they sat back, they sat deep, and then they broke with the counter attack, and Carberry just weren't able to lift them really. Um, I suppose that's down to most of them playing junior football. Like nine of the players in the panel are only intermediate. The rest of them are junior. A lot of players have been brought in. Um, a Banascarty player, coincidentally, Dan Toomey came on. He's 18 years of age. He's played the full, full game. Played pretty well, but I suppose it was a step up for him and the rest of the Carberry team, like Ballon Colleague. They're not like one of the best sides of the Premier Senior, but they've been there for years. They went to a semi-final in 2016, 2014. Lads like Paddy Kelly coming onto the pitch. like So they have very good players. And uh, Carberry, it's a learning curve for them. It's a very good year. They have to build on it for next year. It is uh, interesting then, what you say there, Matthew, because I'm just going through Holly O'Sullivan's inside track column, which will be on page two in this week's Southern Star. And he made a similar point to yourself about uh, maybe the, the strength and conditioning not being quite where it needs to be for Carberry because, as you say, most of them are applying their trade at the junior level and that step up is too much of a reach. But he also did make the point that this Carberry side has restored the pride in the purple and gold. So after a few years of loss after loss after loss, they had a great run this season. So all not negatives coming off that Carberry defeat. There are plenty of positives for Tim Buckley and his team to take, and you never know. Maybe it's something they can build on going in to next season. So plenty of positives, and Hawley's column well worth reading on that game. Number two, Matthew. And uh, another disappointment with Carberry Rangers losing to Nebo, but a lot of people were saying, including Kieran a few weeks ago, Todd Nebo would a slaughter of Carberry Rangers, really. But Carberry Rangers, they've performed very well in this game. I watched this on the Irish Examiner, and they defended deep. The only thing, they didn't have an attacking outlet. Well, I suppose John Hayes was their sweeper, and he's around 37 years of age. So that tells you all you need to know. The fact he's even playing a Premier Senior is a credit to himself as well. And uh, yeah, Carberry Rangers, they're a young, young side. They will develop in the next few years. Like... All it took really was a lucky Nemo goal to win the game. Like a ball rebounding off the post and Nemo, Nemo's Barry O'Driscoll just uh, hopped on the ball and put it in the back of the net. And that was the difference between the sides at the end. Carby Rangers did, didn't have the legs at the end of the game. Maybe if the ref added an extra few seconds, they could have got an equaliser there. But yeah, it, Nemo got out of jail in this game. But Carby Rangers will have something to build on next year. And we didn't say that at the start of the year. Like they... They performed pretty poorly in the last three years. And to get to a quarterfinal, to push Nemo all the way, to play against the Bars as well in the group, let's not forget, they'll take a lot of positives from this year, Carberry Rangers. And Declan Haynes only recently into the job as well. He'll take some positives going to next year as well. So that's all, always a positive for Carberry Rangers. Um, Matthew, and, um, just because you were at... at number you, one is, sorry, Matthew, just because you were at this game or you watched this game, um, I want to get some more of your thoughts on it because... Declan Hayes said after that he was extremely proud of the performance that his side uh, put in. They stuck to the game plan that they set out and it nearly paid dividends because they nearly got over the line. But I saw quotes from the Nemo coach after the game and he said he hopes he never finds himself coaching a team to play in that defensive style. So what was your own take on not necessarily the quotes but the way Carberry Rangers set up was it overly negative or was it needs must is that was that their best chance to actually beat this Nemo side 
It probably was when you think about it. Look, a lot of people were thinking after the lead that Nemo were uh, the also runs, they were going to win the championship pretty easily with the likes of Luke Connolly and Mark Cronin. And for Carberry Rangers to actually challenge in this game, they had to sit deep. They didn't really against the bars at Bandascarti, and the bars destroyed them. They did it against Nemo, and yeah, they got a lot of luck out of it. Like Nemo scored 1 1 at the first half, but. A lot of the Nemo players didn't cover the sense of glory either. Like, uh, there's no point complaining for the Nemo coach to complain about the Carberry Rangers style of play. His players didn't perform at the day particularly either. So, you know, and it tells it tells its own story when um, my man, the match of the day was Keelan Scannell for the losing team. So, like, Nemo didn't perform particularly well in this game, and they have to perform better at the semi finals. And Ballon Colleague performed. Relatively the same way against Carberry. The difference was Carberry were open defensively and they were just inexperienced to deal with the Balancholic counter attack. Balancholic will play the exact same way as they did against Carberry against Nemo. This time, Balancholic will have a quick counter attack, not like Carberry Rangers. And um, you know, we say a lot of the old, some of the older lads and the young young team that isn't really experienced enough. So Nemo has to be, you know, prepared for this. They have to be prepared to win a county to um, counter attack counteract these teams if you can counteract these teams what's the point in trying to win a county so I think it was really below the well bent really from the, the Nemo coach like you have to beat these kind of teams to eventually win a county like it's not going to be hard at the end of the day like yeah if anything they should be thrilled that they managed to get over the line in a tough fixture rather than throwing out sour grapes after getting over the line but regardless that's one for a rivalry to build on next year, maybe if they meet again, Carberry Rangers will have something to stick on the dressing room wall. But number one then, Matthew, I'm assuming it's the one West Cork team we have left in the Premier Senior Football Championship. Exactly right, Jack. It is. It's Castlehaven, uh, true to the semi-finals after their win against uh, Mallow, 214 to 13 points. It was expected, really, in the end, like, uh, especially, well, in the second half, there was a bit of doubt with Damien Callan getting a red card. We, I didn't actually see the incidents on uh, the streaming service. I don't think anybody see the incidents. It was off the ball. Uh, we might we might get some more clarification in the next few weeks or so, see if he's available for the Barrows game in two weeks' time. We'll see about that. But uh, Castle Aver will be hoping he's available. Mark Collins actually went off with an injury as well. And Mallow really pushed them hard. But Castlehaven stood up when counted. The likes of Brian Hurley, Cahill Maguire, Michael Hurley, Mark Collins himself coming back onto the pitch after that blood soap. So Castlehaven will have a lot to build on. And this game against the Bars now, it's it's just appetising when you think about it. It's not just appetising really for people in West Cork or even Cork County. I think this game will be watched nationwide. When you look at the last two games, 2020 put penalty shootouts, 2021 penalty shootout, and there were six goals in last year's tie. So expect fireworks in this game. This would be a massive game for Castlehaven, and it will show where Castlehaven are at as well in regards to winning a county. Because out of all the sides left, Castlehaven, like when you look at Balancholic last won a title in 2014, uh, the Bars last year, Nemo in 2020, and Castlehaven all the way back in 2013. So they'd be desperate to win this county title. And uh, it's hard to believe that they haven't won it for that long. They have to win it now this year to cement themselves as a big side. And we hope that Castlehaven will go on a run. Yeah, absolutely. That's a juicy trilogy to look forward to. And we'll have in-depth coverage of the clash with the Bars over the next few weeks, both in the Southern Star and on the Star Sport podcast. I suppose just some other pointers to take from the weekend are that Bantry Blues now know their semi-final opponents match you and uh, it's not going to be easy for the Blues to cement their place in the final either of the Premier Intermediate that is it's not really no like Eve Leary a free scoring team like you look at Chris Old Jones over the weekend I think he scored 310 for play or something like that in the championships so far Chris O'Leary has been excellent Brian O'Leary so there's a lot of players that this Eve Leary team could call upon and Bantry well I suppose with Bantry they've won all their games they're, they're going in with a bit of form. Rory Dean, like he was the one player for Carberry, actually, that I would talk belongs at Premier Senior. So they have him at their disposal as well. So Arthur Copley's been scoring freely as well for Bantry. So they have a lot of positives to take going into this game. Like Eve Leary are a good side, but um, they, did, they did lose a game at the group stage to kill the Matra. So they are beatable. They are beatable, Eve Leary. I would argue probably the other side of the draw is actually Harvard, when you think about it. Can't talk. 
against Kinematra. Kinematra managed by John Evans. Cantor have been on a, a really good winning streak this season. So, in my opinion, actually, Jack, I think Bantry actually avoided the best side of the draw. So, they'll definitely fancy their chances going into this Eve Larry game. Like, uh, if they're going to win this Premier Intermediate Championship, they have to beat sides like Eve Larry to do that. Well, it's great to have so much West Cork involvement at the business end of the various championship grades. But we're going to switch our attention now quickly, Matthew, to the Carberry Junior A football final, which takes place this Sunday in Ahiohill, I think. Is that right? Ahiohill, yeah. And um, it's between Aberdeen Rangers and St. James's. Aberdeen Rangers going for their first title in 28 years. St. James's looking to secure their second in just four years. And Matthew, you've been speaking to both camps. You've caught up with Alan O'Shea, who's the player manager of St. James's, and Dennis O'Leary, who is a selector with Argonine Rangers. And we're going to hear from both in just a moment. But before we do, Matthew, I want to get your own thoughts on this game. So what kind of game do you think we can expect? It's probably a bit of a novel pairing. It's not one many would have predicted at the start of the season. But Argonine Rangers did knock out the defending champions, Tyg Macora, in the semi final. So their tails will surely be up and they must be confident going in that they can break their 28 year hoodoo. Exactly. And even the way the game ended with uh, Luke McCarthy, young Luke McCarthy, saving a penalty. And uh, you'll see from the interview later that uh, it's actually shocking with Luke. They actually kind of practiced penalties beforehand, which which is pretty unusual for like a junior A side. And and uh, Luke saved the penalty for Brian O'Driscoll, no less, for Joy McCarrick. So, like, what, what a save that was. And, uh, you know, I think this would be an interesting game, actually, because James's are the best uh, attack statistically in the Junior A Championship. Arcadine are the joint best defence. I don't know, have you come across a game, a certain game in the summer between Cork and Lowe's? Like, Cork were pretty much attack-wise. Lowe's very defensive. I think this could be a game like that, but I think unlike Lowe, I think Argadine have the young players to counterattack James's. Like James's don't particularly have a good defense, so this will be a very, very interesting game to see who wins this uh, junior A championship. Like James's since 2019 beat Van Scarty in the final, but Argadine haven't won it since um, 1994, 28 year hoodoo, as you said, and they haven't reached the final actually since 1994. So it's a big occasion for Argadine Rangers. And when you think about uh, the interviews with Paul Holland in the past few weeks, like there, there was only 25 players signed up. For them to be in this position is absolutely unbelievable, as well as that with James's as well. I don't think anybody would have predicted either of these sides in the final, uh, never mind both. So it's a brilliant occasion in Ahiol on Sunday, and I definitely recommend that anybody who can go down, go down to this game, because the junior championship has been absolutely unbelievable this season. Uh, just one more point then, Matthew, before... We go to your interviews, and that is the fact that you've wrote the previews for this game, for this week's Southern Star, and I've been lucky enough to have a sneak peek at both before they go to print on Thursday. And one of the aspects that I thought was really interesting was the fact that, like, not necessarily historically, but this St. James's team has been classed as almost an aging team in the last few years, whereas the Aberdeen Rangers team is obviously very young and inexperienced at this level but what i found interesting was that st james's have managed to blood some youngsters this year so there is that blend of youth and experience and i wonder how that will stand them in the final do you think that's going to be of benefit to the artfield side well it could go either way jack when you think about it because um the art as you say, James, is they're a very old side, but they're very wise as well when you think about it. And they've won it in 2019. They've been there, done that. But at the same time, will they have the energy to keep up with this Arvidine young team? That, that'll be the asset test for this uh, James' side. But Mary's were considered a young team. Banda Scarty are definitely considered a young team. And they did with both um, easily against Banda Scarty and then against Mary's with a last-minute goal. So when you think about it, James has have faced this challenge before but when when you think about Ty McCarries are pretty older side as well and Arcadine dead with those so like it, it's going to be very very interesting when you think about it and uh, young against old best defence against best attack it's going to be epic this game and uh, I would definitely recommend anybody to go down to this game because there's a lot of aspects to cover in this game as uh, Dennis and Alan discussed in the interviews as well so 
should be a very, very interesting game. And uh, hopefully I'll go down to it myself. It should be a very, very fascinating encounter. Great stuff, Matthew. Well, let's hear from both camps now. We're going to hear from Aberdeen Rangers selector Dennis O'Leary. But first, St. James's player manager, Alan O'Shea. So who would have thought this at the start of the year? St. James's from Marrickfield are in the Judah Ray Carberry County fi- Carberry final. And joining me on the podcast here is player manager Alan O'Shea just to discuss their prospects before this weekend's game against Aberdeen Rangers and uh, their campaign so far today. So first of all, Alan, like the game against Mayors, we were chatting off air about it. I was at the match myself. It was a brilliant game to watch. So how were the players after um, that weekend of action? Like, uh, have they calmed down a bit and getting ready for this weekend? Uh, they have, yeah. We went back training Wednesday night and we brought them down to earth a bit. And they're, they're, they're buzzing. They're looking forward to now, yeah. Looking forward to the final. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. And uh, I suppose like uh, the end of the game as well, you getting that late goal, obviously, to win the game at the end, like uh, be three points down. Did you think at that stage of the game when it was one ten to one seven that you would be in a West Cork final? Uh, um our I suppose our attitude is like you always just keep going. Like we in every game we finish strong. But I suppose the Marys were in control at that time and I suppose we just kept going, really. We just kept going. And uh, the first game against Mary's, like the first day out, the group stage, I was at that game as well. You lost that game, I think it was a uh, 3-12 to one thirty that day. And uh, yeah, it was a tight game at Ahiol. Um, Ahiol is the venue of the, the West Cork final as a coincidence there. But uh, that was a tough game for day against Mary's. Like Mary's were probably the better team of the day. So, um, how did you feel after that game? Did you feel in a good position by the performance or were you disappointed with how you performed? Um, I suppose disappointed because we conceded two goals at the start and that kind of, we were chasing the game for the whole time. And the Mary's forwards, are, they're very clinical. Like, and we, every time we get them back, they would score. Like, so they're, I said they were the better team that day, all right, yeah. And they're a very good team, yeah. And the next two games, you recovered pretty well against uh, Castlehaven, winning that game, and then hammering St. Collins in the last game as well. So um, you recovered pretty well from the Bears' defeat, did, um, didn't you? We did, because we had to beat Castlehaven, or we were out. So we knew that we as well. And the Columns, we played very well. So, yeah, we really kicked on with that. And going into the quarterfinal uh, against Bandascarti, were you uh, happy with how you performed at the group stage, especially the last two games, or did you, did you feel you needed more things to work on? Um, I suppose the second half of the Castlehaven game kind of kicks kickstart our year, and uh, we, just, we just we just we just played brilliant. We just really just tore into them and kicked on, and then that followed on playing Cullum's game, and we played. Very very well against Columns and then we knew Bell we knew Bell we knew we had the offer a game against Bell really had a good start in the first half and we just kept going and the, the Bell game overall like a lot of people were saying Bell were um, were top of the charts and a lot of people were saying he had hardly any chance going into the game you didn't listen to the media or anything going into the game you just focused on yourselves no, no, no. I think we never take notice of that. No, no. We always believe in ourselves. Yeah, what I noticed against Ball actually was um, some of the young players coming into the team. The likes of Aaron Hayes scored a brilliant second goal that day. Connor Hayes played brilliant that day as well. So a lot of the players, like there is a lot of players in that twenty nine G team still there, but them young players have added an extra zest to the team. Would you agree? Oh, huge! Uh, like we have. We've added in a young fella there now, Dennis White. He's only 18. You have Chris Dor Hayes. He's 20. But even fellas there who are on the bench, like we have we have a young fella there, Adrian Welton. We've been Max Shane. We have James Hannes. So they're all, it's great to have young lads training. And like there for years, we know young fellas coming through. And it's it's great now, like the club. Next year, we have another young fella coming through, Connor Welton. And in the year after, we have other little good players, Sean Welton, Liam Dooley, all these fellas. So the club, it's, you know, it's, it's, the young players are coming back to the club. You know, it's, it's good. 
and the young players really played their part in the semi final win over Marys. And uh, I suppose at half time it was one five each. Like, what were you thinking at half time? Did you think uh, the game was there for the taking free? Oh, yeah. uh, we, look, Marys are the best team we played this year, and uh, we knew like it was going to. It was just a battle, like, and it was going to be very close. And I say they knew that as well. Like, they're, they're, their forward line is excellent. They played, I think they played better. I think they played better last Sunday than they played against Oden I thought they were, their kick passing was outstanding. But, like, we kind of, it was like a ding dong of a match, really. And we just hang in there and we got our chances and we took them. You definitely took your chance because your shot accuracy was excellent that day as well against uh, Mary's and. Uh... I suppose the last few points before your goal, even the Connor Hayes point really sticks out to me because that was an outstanding score, even against the elements that they uh, like it curls between the post Frank Hayes's point to level it as well. Like there was a lot of players stepping up that day. That has to be brilliant going into the game against Argentina at the weekend. Uh it is, yeah. It's good. Look, it's it's always good when your forwards are scoring. But look, it's gonna be a different game against Argentina and it's gonna be a totally different game. And uh, speaking of your forwards, you've scored a total of eight seven two in the five games so far. Like a lot of scoring, in, indeed. I think Marys are the only team to outscore you this championship. But that is absolutely brilliant scoring from your team, and that has to be another aspect going to the Argentine game that you could take as a positive. Oh, it is, yeah, it is. I suppose we are scoring well, but yeah, we're scoring well, but we're defending well as well. Yeah, we are scoring well, I suppose. And uh, do you think the final three years ago, like you beat Ball in 2019 to win the Carver Junior A Football Championship for the first time, do you think the experience of playing that year would stand to you going to this final? Um, uh, I wouldn't think so. Like, well, I suppose it has some b- bits and some bits won't. Like, um, there's a few lads there, I right, have played in 2019, but there's probably seven or eight fellas never played in the final that day. So it helps. It's it's a one-off game, you know. I wouldn't I wouldn't think so. No, it just some fellas, some fellas might be their first final ever played, and they might they might be they might have no nerves, you know. And sometimes other fellas we we played plenty finals, mine you know mine show. And uh, like Arcadie winning the, winning the other semi final, that was a bit of a shock considering you know, they beat the West Car champions from last year, type of car. It's like a. Uh, Going like the game, the Argentine game was two days after your game. Do you also see that as an advantage that you have more time, slightly more time to prepare for this final? Uh, no, not really. I thought I wouldn't say Arrowy Rangers was a shock. Like, I they're knocking the door for the last couple of years in semi finals, and they have great young players coming through. And every time we play them, there's only a kick a ball. I think the last time we play, we won by a point. They last time. After that, they beat us by a point. I think in 2019, we beat them by a point. So there's, there, there won't be much in it, anyway. The big prize in this, I know there's the prize of winning the Carver Junior A, and you, you'd love to do that, obviously. But as well as that, there's the prize of getting into the new County Premier Junior Championship next season. For a club like St. James's, what would it mean to the people there? Because... That that looking at that to me, that seems like a very good prize for next season. If you win this now on on uh, Sunday, you go straight through to that for twenty twenty three. Yeah, I suppose it is. But we're just concentrating, trying to win the final, and whatever happens, that happens. But it is it is a nice touch, all right. Bit about yourself, Alan, because uh, you're the player manager of the team. A, a very very uh, unusual role indeed, especially around these areas, like. You went on, scored the winner, winning goal against Marys. You were managing the team in the first half. Like, what's it like to balance being a player and being a manager of the team? I, I'd imagine it's extremely tough. Um, <laughs> it's stressful. All right, <laughs> oh, no, no. Do you know what? I love it. It's not too bad. It's you have good fellas on the sideline with you, and you want the older players. Like, there's older players there on the. On the on the on the sideline as well with you, and they help you out as well. Like um, it 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 has its ups and downs. Like, but I don't mind it. It's 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 a challenge, really. And I suppose in the last game, arguably, uh, you timed your timed your introduction to perfection because when you came on, then you got one one, including that winning goal. So, uh, like, uh, you're definitely the right man for the job. 
Oh, I don't know. I tell you after after Sunday week. Absolutely. And uh, I suppose, what would it be uh, for you to become West Cork champions? You were West Cork champions in 2019, obviously, beating Val in the final for the first time in your history. So win it for the second time for St. James's. What would that mean for the club? Like, I, I know getting to the Premier Junior is a very good prize in itself, but to win West Cork even is a brilliant achievement. Oh, yeah. It'd be huge. It'd be huge. Like, it, it, lift, it lift the whole parish. It lift the club. It's just, it's be amazing. You know, it's just, it just makes everyone, does just puts everyone, smile on everyone's face. You know, it's just, it's just brilliant. Like, it, it's just, you, you see at the moment, flags are going up everywhere. It's it's lovely to see and it'd be lovely to be lovely to do it, get over the line. And uh, like what I noticed as well against me is like the reaction from your fans when your goal went in, like they all nearly crowded around uh, the dugout that time. Like it kind of shows the passion that the James's people have in their team and the way they support their team, like they're passionate out. Oh, they're very passionate, yeah. Like I could tell you a story there. I met a woman yesterday and basically she would she drove around the parish to check how many flags were up. Because she was saying there should be more flags up, like you know, you know that's how that's how passionate they're they're about it. Like they're definitely passionate about it. They will bring yeah. the numbers um, to Ahiol on the uh, Sunday, and uh, I suppose just the uh, word of the pitch as well. What do you think of uh, the final being held in Ahiol? You played there already against uh, Mary's. A uh, good venue for a final. Yeah, it's fine. We don't we don't care where the final where the final is on. Once you're in the final, that's the main thing. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. And uh, thank you, Alan, for coming on to the podcast. Wish you the best of luck okay. at the weekend against Argadine. And um, yeah, it should be a very good final. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you, Matthew. So after beating the West Cork holders in the semi-finals after a dramatic conclusion to the game, Argadine Rangers are in the West Cork Junior A Football Championship final for the first time since 1994 and aim to win it for the first time since 1994. And joining me on the podcast here is Dennis O'Leary, selector of the team and also chairman of the Argentine Rangers GA Club. So first of all, Dennis, how are the lads before the game? Like, it's a big game for a lot of these players. Huge game, Matthew, yeah. Um, I don't know, they're relaxed, I suppose. Um, probably in a position didn't, we didn't think we would be in at the start of the year, that's for sure. Um, young team, and, you know, we've... It might take them another year or two, you know, before they kind of um we probably I think there was seven under twenty one started the other night. So um we just felt it might have taken them another year just to get used to the physicality of the junior football. But um look, we are where we are and we're delighted obviously. And getting out of the group first, uh, it was a tough group to get out of with uh, Barry Roll there, Ty McCorricks, a lot of intercounty stars on those sides and obviously Bandon as well in that group. So that was a tough group to start off. It was, yeah. Um, obviously, Cara being um, defending champions for starters, and then Barry Row, which would be our neighbours, and of course we were amalgamated with them in in the underage setup, so we 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 would have known them very well, and uh, a team that are, are going to progress, I think, over the next couple of years. So, um, and then Bandon, you know. So look, you know, every group is tough enough to get out of, but um, we, you know, I suppose at the start of it, you would have probably fancied Cara and one of ourselves. So ourselves are Barry Row. So look, fortunate enough, we managed to get out. And really, the first game really um, had toll of the season because it was against Barry Row, your rivals, as you said, and you beat them. So that was a great way to start the championship, indeed. It was, Matthew, and you know, it, it, it was probably. <laughs> Prior to it, things hadn't been going great. Uh, training, fellas, you know, we had a few injuries. We had guys away and holidays and exams and stuff. And the preparation was poor. And, and you know, the game itself, we kind of felt going into it, we probably had to hang in there. I think if we went toe-to-toe with Barry Rowe, our general feelings, they, they probably would have been a bit too much for, for us at the time. Um, they were after a good league comp- campaign. And as I said, we were struggling. So we just we kind of played it to keep in the game as long as we, we could. And we kind of won it in the last 10 minutes then. Um, a poor game of football. You know, we probably got criticised after it for, for being maybe too defensively. But we just felt on the night that's, that was what needed to be done. And, uh, speaking... and um, you know, the result was... De- Sorry, the result was just, you know, the most important thing, I suppose, match at the time. And, and we managed to get that. And I suppose, speaking of uh, getting over the line, like the game against Randall Oak really epitomised that in the quarterfinal final. 
throw off their normal time, 11 points each, I think it was, and then you won it in the end with a Dar Holland goal, and uh, you won it 114 to 11 points at the end in that year. So that was another game that um, propelled you to this final as well. Yeah, huge, because, you know, it was played above Nat Hill in a, in a very swing, windswept pitch at the, at the day. There was, you know, Gales. It was a kind of a game of two halves for both teams. And we got two red cards. We got a black card. Uh, I suppose at one point of the game, we were down to 11 men playing against a strong uh, strong breeze. And the lads, again, they dug in. They had to dig in. And um, we managed to get to, get to the, the full time of that game level. And... We were back to the full complement again um, for extra time and we managed to pull away. But, um, and, you know, Randall's all credit to them. They're after a great run through their own campaign there with the last uh, probably two years. So, you know, that was a, it was a great test and, and a great, a great um, I think it, it brought us on a, long, a lot. And I think the lads, you know, got a lot of confidence from it. And the Swipe McCormick team in the semi final, there's a lot of angles to this game because it was absolutely bad. This uh, semi final in the man it ended 1 9 to 1 6. And uh, where do I start? Like, first of all, Luke McCarthy, a young goalkeeper, saved a penalty from a former Cork senior in Brian O'Driscoll, a fella that's doing so well for Carberry at the moment. So I'm just curious though, did Luke practice saving penalties beforehand or not? Um, we did a small bit, you know, of the panel we have. Um, Luke is the only guy that doesn't play it, it isn't involved in the hurling so he was getting a few private sessions in fairness to Paddy Kassan took him once or twice by himself uh, and practicing kickouts um, you know general general just goalkeeping drills and at the end of the session I was there myself We he practiced penalties on him um, a young guy that he's leaving certainly sure was drafted in because our, our, our keeper the last two or three years went to Australia for 12 months so, um, you know, a huge, huge moment from coming to a junior team. And obviously in goal, it's, it's you know, one, one error in goal is highlighted very much whereas out the field it isn't. So, but, you know, I had the young for myself uh, underage and I always found him a very capable goalkeeper and very calm. And, you know, I think he's the personality that you want for, for being in goal. But um, magnificent night for him personally and for the team. He left in a goal that he would have been disappointed with. I think, you know, always kind of hit it early in that game. And then, you know, last kick of the game to keep us in it. You know, it's just a fantastic, fantastic save. And throughout the game as well, your players show great grit. And indeed, Dar Holland got that goal. There was a few brilliant performances all over the field. Like you were behind in the second half at one stage against Ty McCorriggs. And for the players to battle back, even when Ty McCorriggs took the lead, West Cork champions taking the lead, and the players fought back in fairness to them and it's mostly a young team as well so that will give him a Trojan of confidence Oh huge huge and I think I think the, the biggest factor was actually was that you know we played hurling three days earlier so the, the whole week prior to that was hurling obviously we don't, we were in a quarter final at the intermediate in, in intermediate championship so we did very little football we did you know the Sunday evening before it 20 minutes with a ball in our hands and you know preparing for a team like Cara so Turned the second half there and, and Cara got to run in us a small bit. And, you know, I just felt in maybe our legs after the, the game a couple of days earlier, um, you know, might become a factor. But credit to them again. They, 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 they dug in there. They weathered the storm. We went up the field. We got the goal. And I think we were well worthy of the win, I think, over the whole game. I think we were the better team. We controlled the game. And I, th I don't think even Cara, I think even the diehard Cara would support, would say, you know, the, the best team won on the night. And it was great credit to the lads that you said there. They're a young team. And, you know, they're learning as they're going along this year. And, you know, that was another huge stepping stone, obviously. You talk about the young team. Like, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, no, but I'd say most of the team weren't even born the last time Arcadine won in 1994. Is that correct? That's your, your spot on. Um, I think we started against uh, Columns or against Carl with... Um, uh, I think there was one player over 26 years old with seven under 21s. We have two more very promising under 21s that are out injured at the moment. Jack Lawton, that you know, won in All Ireland for Cork under 17s. So, you know, we've 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 viewed on our side, but our numbers are very tight. You know, we're still picking from a panel of probably 20 players. Um, but to be fair to them, you know, we've quality there. Um, and yeah, it's huge for them actually. You know, as you said. There, 94 since we last won it. So, 
they weren't and I think we've maybe got to a semi final once or twice in that in the in the time spell between. But um never really got anywhere near a, 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 this stage of the competition. So it is it is a huge boost, yeah, a huge boost. And another aspect he talked about was playing Jewel, like he played uh, Russell Rovers three days earlier, as he mentioned in the hurling. You went far into that competition in Premier Junior as well. And Paul Holland, the hurling manager, was mentioned to me a few weeks ago that I think only just over 20 players actually signed up at the start of the year. And for a dual club, that must have been tough. But to, for both sides to go further on into the competition, that's a credit to Arkadine Rangers, really. It is, yeah. And, you know, um, Paul was in the hurling management and the trainer this year. And, of course, we worked very closely together. And, you know, even in that game against Russell Rovers, Paul probably, you know, rested one or two players that he felt, you know, were were coming back from injuries and he probably needed them for the hurling but you know with the football in mind so you know at the, at the end of the day we were working as a club together but um our panel was very tight and I think we got we just picked up two or three injuries to key players and to be fair they were probably being pushed back and probably played through injuries we lost two guys to immigration and so, you know, we were we were down to our bare bones and I think we played, was it, eight or nine championship matches in 11, in 11 weeks. And, you know, regardless of what kind of panel, that takes its toll. And uh, But look, we were after coming out the other end. Uh, we have a week or so, we have 10 days there now since the, uh, to kind of dust ourselves down, prepare ourselves, rest the players up. Some players needed a small bit of rest. There's a couple of them haven't trained with the last couple of days. So, but... Look, we're in. We're in the final. We're there in merit, and you know we give it. We give it the best shot we have now. You mentioned a coach in the backroom team, a certain coach called Paddy Kassan, an All Ireland champion from twenty ten. So I'm just curious, how did he come on board for Aberdeen Rangers? Like, yeah, he's some coach to have. He is, to be fair to man, I suppose he he originally came down to us. Maybe, maybe it could have been six or seven years ago. I'd say it was his connection with Paul Holland, bought and played for uh, Clyde. And Paul, and um, so we went a few years in with Odom, and he's back living in Clonic Kilty you now. So we always had a kind of a connection with him. Teams you know, you know, he specializes in this. but um, I suppose look. We had a connection with him. We, you know, I've known Paddy you now with the bones ten years, and um, you know, it's a pleasure to be working back with him again and to have some of his capabilities and his knowledge and his, even for this week now coming into the West Cork final to have a guy there with the experience of playing for Cork has won in All Ireland, as he's you know, that's that's huge for our young fellas. You know, um, yeah, I suppose to get him in the right frame of mind and you know not to get carried away with the whole. You know, there's a lot of things going on outside the club now and fellas see flags up and this and that, and which is great. But, you know, at, at the same time, the players have to kind of just focus on the job that's on, on ahead now and that's just taking on our field next Sunday. And the rewards, obviously, are huge. And, uh, like, winning in all Ireland, as he did, Paddy Kassan, and uh, I think he won an All-Star, correct me if I'm wrong, no, I think he did around 2010 as well, or even before or after that. But for the young players, particularly in that team, to look up to a guy like that in the coaching staff, that will bring the players on so much um, in the next few years, even if you don't win on Sunday. Oh, huge, huge. And I think um, I think the fruits, you know, it's like anything. People said that these things happen overnight and they don't. Uh, Paddy's been work, working on systems and he's, uh, he's, he's detailed, to, you know, especially defensively. And I think like, the fact that he was probably a defensive player himself, it's huge, you know, I suppose the first thing he's trying to instill was to be hard to beat, you know, to be a good, solid side. You take the field and you're hard to beat for starters. And we're trying to progress that into, um, you know, transform it into being, you know, trying to get the attacking side of the, the, the game. But um, his attention to detail is huge, you know, kickouts, um, where a player should be, and, you know, all the, all the, all the things that a, a top, player like himself probably picked up during the years and now is, is passing it on to a coaching side of things and as you said there to to young players coming through that's invaluable you know and look if it doesn't work out for it's Sunday you know we'll dust ourselves down and as you said the players are young and we, we'll go again but you know hopefully you know look we'll see how Sunday goes first 
And you talked about the big rewards about this game and uh, the winner of this competition goes up to the Premier Junior Football Championship no matter what happens for the county series in 2023. So does that add an extra incentive to win this game as well? It's a huge prize on offer. Well, it is, it is. You know, I suppose we up, up to the up to the car again to the last thing on our minds. But um, ah, look, it's it's obviously out there now and, and like for ourselves or James's. It's um, it's you know, it's an added bonus. There's no question about that. Um, but I think I think you know when you don't win in West Cork for twenty until since nineteen ninety four, you know the West Cork is 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 the is is what we're, you know, that's just the focus of the team and to try to get that. The fact that this is coming with it this year obviously is is, is a huge is a huge bonus. But um, I think you know it was the farthest thing from our minds to be honest all year. You know, I personally. You always want to get as far as in, in the competition you are you, you that you enter, and that was to win the West Cork, and you know that that's where we are. And a quick word on the manager as well, uh, Dan Connolly. He's done the brilliant job as well, not just yourself or Paddy as well there. So, uh, it, it does a very good backroom team in Argentine Rangers at the moment. Adder is Dan. Dan is one of our own. He he was an outstanding player himself. I think anything the club has won in recent history there and the the hurling and stuff. Dan was a huge part of it and. He's a great speaker. He's very popular. He's, you know, he's a character in his own right. If you, if you, if you spoke to Dan, he's, you know, very easy to get on with. He's likable. So, um, and look, as he keep, he'd be laughing away and saying, look, sure, I don't know what I'm doing, but, you know, there's a lot more to Dan than people think. And behind the scenes, he's fantastic. And, you know, as I said, the players have respect for him. I think it's huge respect for him. And um, I think you need that. And, you know, I think they've, a lot of those young players looked up to Dan when he was playing. And now he's kind of, you know, helping them out. So, um, look, it's working. And while it's working, you know, Dan has a job. So, And a uh, really, really fine question here, because uh, the Arcadine Rangers fans are passionate about and if they were to win the West Cork title for the first time since 1994, there'd be huge excitement around the village, really. Ah, huge, you know. I suppose, look, for any club, in a lot of clubs in West Cork and James's or similar to ourselves, they had fantastic success and I followed them. I have a nephew playing with with um, with St. James's. He captained them in, in 2019. So, you know, I would be, I'd be very familiar with their with the club and 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 their their, their players and everything. And huge admiration from um, a small club, similar to ourselves. Like they are pinned in between two senior clubs in water, so you know their 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 base is small. And what they're what they've done is fantastic. And we're similar below. Um, you know we're sharing a parish with Balnascarty. Um, and we've barrier at the other side of us. So or pick a small. So, you know. Success doesn't come too often, so when it does come, you know, by God, you'll cherish it. And um, you know, look, it's hard to know what it would mean to the club, but I know certainly, you know, it's be huge, huge. Um, if we could get this over the line on Sunday, um, and you know, success breeds down through the, the down through the in, into the underage, and and for for guys coming on, so um. Look, you know, we'll see how we are. We'll give our best shot Sunday. And, you know, that's all you can ask the players to do. And, and if it's good enough, fantastic. And if it isn't, you know, they can come back to the village proud, win, lose, or draw. And, you know, if they give, if they, you know, and I know that they will once they give it their all for our Green Rangers and themselves and their own families, you know, look, the result is the after itself then. And, um, but like, you know, look, they've been fantastic so far this year. They won't step no to, you know, the glory of the whole year but um you know we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes and you know hopefully we can do it yeah definitely definitely and uh, the Argentine Rangers fans will be will be passionate out once they win the West Cork if they win the West Cork it's a very good game to look forward to St James against Argentine Rangers on Sunday in Ahiol. Uh thank you Dennis for coming on to the podcast wish you the best of luck for Sunday and uh, yeah it's been a brilliant year for Argentine so far yeah, yeah. Thanks very much, um, yeah, Matthew. No, pleasure to do it with you. And uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you know, hopefully we can get our line. So. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you in association with Access Credit Union and the Donal O'Driscoll Student Bursary. The Donal O'Driscoll Student Bursary has been established to honour the career and achievements of Access Credit Union's late CEO, Donal O'Driscoll. 
Throughout his long term as CEO, Donald championed the credit union ethos of supporting and empowering members, particularly in the sphere of education. In recognition of this, the Donald O'Driscoll Bursary will provide financial support to one individual embarking on third level education or commencing an apprenticeship in 2022. The recipient of the bursary will be awarded €5,000 to help with costs. To apply for the bursary, visit www.accesscu.ie forward slash bursary. Ballylickie's Keith Cronin has been in great form this season and he goes to the Yorkshire Rally this weekend in search of a record equaling fifth British Rally Championship alongside his Killarney co-driver Mikey Galvin. Kieran has been speaking to Keith ahead of this weekend's race. Keith, there are two rounds of the British Rally Championship left and you're right in the battle for the title. Can you fill us in on the state of play right now? So at the moment, yeah, there's two rounds left and um, I have to win the last two rounds. It's pretty much a straight shootout between me and one other driver, Oshin Price. If he wins the next round, which is in two weeks' time, he wins the championship at that stage. If I win it, I bring it to the last round. Well, win it, I just have to beat him. Um, but at the moment, it has been me and him first or second all the time. So maybe one of the other guys will step up as well, which but my target will be to beat him. And if we do that, we bring it to the last round. Like you said, right, right this kind of winner-take-all situation, you know, like two rounds left, like it's between yourself and Oshin Price, it's so, so close. But you can almost draw on your experience. I think your first time you won the BRC back in 2009, you were, it was like this as well, wasn't it? It was a winner-take-all situation. So can you draw on that experience now, or is that too far in the past for you to, 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 to use? No, uh, hopefully we can draw on that. Um, but uh, look, at the end of the day, um, I won't do a whole pile different. We'll just go out, uh, do the best we can on the event. We'll just take it one at a time. I won't be thinking of the, the I'll only be thinking of the next round. I won't be thinking of the one after it. Um, so we'll just get out there and, and do the best we can. And as I said, we have to win it. Um, you know, so <laughs> that's what we'll be trying to do. Uh, we we good pace on gravel the last time uh, we managed to beat Oshin. But look, so many things. There's so many factors with rallying, like. With the car with me, you know, there's so many things that go wrong. A one puncher and it, and we're out. So um, I won't be taking anything for granted. We'll just we'll just go do the best we can and, and hopefully get the win the next day. How would you cope with that pressure then, knowing that you have to win the next rally? Uh, in one sense, I I I I nearly think it's possibly uh so in so one way I nearly see it sometimes there's less pressure because it's uh just it's it's, a, it's, a, it's there's only one objective um if that makes sense um and if we if we do, we do it. If we don't, we don't. Uh, it's kind of my way of looking at it. it like, it's, it's obviously not the end of the world. If we don't do it, it just means we don't get to win the championship. But um, as I said, we'll just go out. Um, it's, 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 it's it's one simple target. So, uh, well, not simple, but it's one target. And um, we'll just go out and try and do it. I'm going to borrow a phrase that Sir Alex Ferguson used years ago. He said, when it gets to the business end, it's like squeaky bum time. So this is this is the business in now, Keith. And how much do you... Do you enjoy, enjoy being in a situation like this? Two readies to go, you need to win, there's pressure there. But how much are you having fun right now with this? Um, it's good. It is tough, like uh, like any sport, I guess. Uh, possibly the enjoyment comes from the success it, it, in the moment. You're so focused and so just trying to do the best you can. You, you don't possibly get to in, in, enjoy it fully. Um because you just don't want to make it, especially with our sport, I don't want to make any mistakes. I, I, you, you're just 100% focused. Um, now, when you get a good stage or you, you get a... When, when it clicks, uh, yes, it's a really good feeling. But um, So that's what, that's what we'll try to do the next day. Um, but I suppose at this end, uh, you know, when it's a straight-on battle, it, it's not necessarily that in, in, enjoyable in the moment because the, there, there's a fair bit of pressure. I suppose for listeners of our podcast, it's important to know too that going into the last rally in, in Wales, you, you were leading the championship but, um, and things were going so well. I'm just looking here at, at my notes. Um, the fourth and final stage on the Saturday, you were you were in the lead of the rally, you were in, in lead of the championship. But then on the aptly named Devil Bridge um, um, stage, things took a turn for the worse. So talk us through what happened there, Keith. Yeah, it was just um, very early in the stage. Um first few corners as well it was like fifth or sixth corner we we just i just got the grip wrong um 
I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. There, there was something on the outside of the corner and, and we just ran wide and hit that and then that put us out of the rally. Um, it was disappointing. Um, a bit unfortunate, but that, that's life as long as, uh, well, it's life in rallying. As long as you're competing, the chances of an accident are always there. Um, but yeah, like that, like obviously now I can't think about that too much because we have to try and hit the ground running again the next day. Um, so yeah, no, it, it was disappointing because uh, our pace was really good. I, I didn't expect to be going as well as we did because <laughs> it was Oshkin's home home rally. So m- maybe I was over trying it, trying to beat him. Um, I said it was, it was disappointing to to crash out, but look, that that's that's rallying again. That <laughs> the first time we we won it, it happened as well before the end of the championship. And so, look, we've been in these positions before. How quickly do you have to forget about an incident like that with the two big events coming up? Like, is it is it almost packed to the side straight away and, and you're just focused on what's coming up? You try not to think about it at all. Um, like, as soon as the helmet goes on. Like, you might think about it a bit before the event, but as soon as the helmet goes on, it, it won't be in my head. <coughs> but, um, it like, hopefully it won't affect my driving or anything sometimes it possibly can you might be a bit hesitant in places you shouldn't be because it'll be in the back of, of your mind on, on like nearly subconsciously you I, I wouldn't actually be thinking about it but subconsciously i might be a bit hesitant in places uh hopefully not um we won't know until we get we get off the first day of friday night how was the car after the roll look there was a bit of damage of course um luckily enough um it, it it's fixable for the next day um, but yeah, it, I'd rather it hadn't happened. But um, yeah, we we should be okay to get going the next set. Looking forward. So the next event is the Track Rod Rally Yorkshire. That's on September twenty third and twenty fourth. Tell us a small bit about this rally. Um, this rally, um, for a good few years in the past was actually the last round of the championship. Um, uh, we've won this rally a couple of times in the past. Very very fast. Last rally, um, not so mountainous like a lot of other gravel rallies. It's it's a lot uh, kind of flatter, but a very very fast rally. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a rally as I've gone well in in the past. So hopefully we can go well on it again. And then after that, it's it's the Cambrian rally. So I suppose you're not even thinking about that. All the focus now is on is on Yorkshire uh, coming up, and then you take about the Cambrian rally after that. Then. Uh, that's it. Uh, I won't even enter my head the Cambrian because if we don't get a result here, we won't we, we won't be going to the Cambrian rally. So uh, everything is, will be will be focused on the, this next event. And looking at the BRC so far for you, like how much have you have you enjoyed this? Like you've had the Jim Clark rally, you've had the had the Grand Prix Forest rally, good wins there. You know, like leading the championship and so on. Like it must have been really enjoyable up to this point, Keith. Yeah, it was, it was good to be leading it. Um, obviously we did it last year for the first time in a long time. Um, and we got back on we changed cars this year and changed tyres so in the, nearly the first tarmac rally and the first gravel rally we struggled a bit not struggled but we just had to work on setup and the car and stuff and then when we would go to the second rally on them surfaces we would go a lot better so hopefully <coughs> this will be our third gravel rally this year now so hopefully um, we, we'll you know be in a good position again and, and the car will be good and you've so much history with the British Rally Championship, Keith. You've won this four times before. You're, <coughs> you're hopefully touch wood going for a record equaling fifth title. Um, do you ever think about that? The fact that you that you could win a fifth and you could be joining a very illustrious club of people who have who've won it five times. Um, I try not to think about it too much. Um, it would be great to do it. Uh, because uh, we would be uh, yeah, we'd be equaling Jimmy McRae's record. Um, so that that would be really good. It's not easy though, as I said. Like we've been, we've done this challenge a good few times. We've been lucky enough to win it four times, but other times, you know, there's we haven't won it. So there's there's so many factors in 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 motorsports. As I said, it's not just down to me. There's the whole team around me. There's the car. There's the co-driver. There's just so much. So um, now I won't be thinking about it too much. It'd be great if we can do it. If we can't, we try and maybe put a plan in place again. I I don't know. We'll see over the winter. You mentioned there about suppose, the whole team that's involved in a in, in a in a chapter like this is um just so many different 
different facets involved. And I just see that you added another sponsor, Molson Group, to your um did they come on board as one of your sponsors? And they're the UK's largest independent new and used heavy equipment dealer. How important is it to get the support of businesses like that and even the local businesses here in West Car? Yeah, I, I'm I'm very lucky. I have some very loyal um people backing me over the years. Uh McCrimmon and McCrimmon coaches and Mick O'Brien and M. O'Brien Plantar, they're, they're probably my two of my longest guys. A few other local businesses got on board this year, uh, Kehan Seafoods. Um, they'd be very local to us. Um, look, motorsport, there's a lot of money involved. I, I, I've been very lucky to have them longer term guys, and yes, it's great to have the newer guys coming on board this year. Um, and we're always working on trying to find more sponsorship. As I said, if, if we put a program in place for next year, um, I think we were a bit late getting going this year, so we'll be work, working on trying to keep the sponsors we have and work on getting new sponsors for, for next year. There's a touch on something there that you said earlier before I let you go about a new car and new tyres this year. It's a Volkswagen Polo GTI. What was behind the change of car? Um, <laughs> it just, the, the, it was a, probably the, it was a car that won the championship last year. Um, it's a well-established car. It's one that wouldn't be being developed anymore. It's probably at the, the maximum. You know, it, it's it's one that's it's still it, it's the Polo seems to be a, a very strong R5 car. Now the other guys are catching up and they're developing them all the time. So there, there really isn't much between them. Um, it's just the opportunity to to to, to use that car came up and, and we took it. And, and the change of tires too, because I know in motorsport and I know it's maybe not. To draw a parallel with Formula One, we've seen Formula One about how 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 important the tires are on on track. But I presume in the BRC, the tires are so so important as well. So talk me through about the change of tires and the reason for it. Um, yeah, a lot of it was just uh, we started out we did last year um with with a manufacturer that they were kind of supporting us over three. It was very much a development program for the manufacturer. I I did did, did we kind of knew the situation we were in, um. Then this year we we switched to Pirelli, which I would have used in the past. Um, and yeah, it did. They have worked well for us. Um, it their tire I used along in the past, but I have to figure them out too. Um, but they're they they have performed really well, and hopefully the next day now they'll they'll give us a good good performance again. Like the tire is everything at the end of the day. It's it's all all we have. It's it's between that's what we have between the ground and the car is the tire. So they are a very important factor. Hopefully everything will work out and hopefully Lady Luck will shine on you in Yorkshire coming up. Okay, thank you so much for joining us and best of luck in the, in the weeks ahead. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. The Star Sport Podcast is brought to you in association with Access Credit Union and the Donal O'Driscoll Student Bursary. The Donal O'Driscoll Student Bursary has been established to honour the career and achievements of Access Credit Union's late CEO, Donal O'Driscoll. Throughout his long term as CEO, Donal championed the credit union ethos of supporting and empowering members, particularly in the sphere of education. In recognition of this, the Donal O'Driscoll Bursary will provide financial support to one individual embarking on third level education or commencing an apprenticeship in 2022. The recipient of the bursary will be awarded €5,000 to help with costs. To apply for the bursary, visit www.accesscu.ie forward slash bursary. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. And before we wrap up this week, just a few things to point to. Worth picking up the Southern Star this week for, and that is 10 pages of reports, analysis and reaction from last weekend's county championship action including match reports from castle haven's win over mallow skibberines win over Doheny's, and the losses of both carberry rangers and carberry in their respective county quarter finals we also have a three-page preview special of the carberry junior a football final between Aberdeen rangers and st james's as we discussed at the top of the show we'll also have Reports and reaction from the World Rowing Championships, where there are five Skibbereen rowers in action for Team Ireland, including Olympic gold medal winners Paula Donovan and Fintan McCarthy. Paula Donovan's going for his first, his fifth World Rowing gold medal. So we'll have the latest from the Czech Republic. And there's obviously plenty more besides. We have road bowling, motorsport, rugby, soccer, and much more. So that's the Southern Star Sports section 
in shops this Thursday or online. Just go to www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper and you can read the Southern Star on your computer, tablet or smartphone for less than two euro per week. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast this week. And thanks as well to our producer, Dylan Mangan. If you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Slán Tamil.